Okay, so in in this series of videos, we've got we're gonna have a few uh, problems that are interesting. Okay, and this is our first interesting problem. So uh, take a look at it there, and you can see what we're gonna have is we've got sort of a, a curly sp sprocket sort of thing. I, I guess I'm not sure exactly the right term, and um, then a gear that rolls around on the inside of that thing. Okay. And uh, so our job is basically to figure out um, what's the angular velocity of that gear um, as it is on the inside. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, let's get after it. Now, the way we want to do something like this, whenever you've got something that's really complicated, is you want to just sort of like focus on just the, the object of interest. Okay, so we got th three or four different pieces here. It depends how you want to try to count, but we've got the outer shell. All right, we're not interested in that. We've got the little arm that's moving around. Uh, we're not actually interested in that. And then we've got the gear itself. Okay, so let's take a look at the gear all by itself. And I'm going to redraw that for us here. Try to make it just a little bit bigger. And if we look at that gear, you can see that we've got a force backwards on that gear here. So let me call that friction. That's some kind of a frictional force. We don't know what it is yet. And then our arm here, OA, has a moment applied to it, okay? Has a moment applied to it. Um, now, the result of that moment is that the little wheel feels a force here. So let's call that F. Okay, so if we strip this thing away and we put in a pivot point right here, all right, let me call that B. Then you can see, basically, this is just like a wheel trying to roll downhill. Okay, that, that's all it is. And we just got to figure out what F is. If we can figure out what F is, then we're, then we're good to go. Okay, so let me, uh, let me set this to the side real quick. Whoops, I don't want to get rid of that stuff. I just want these. All right, well, my trick's not going to work as well this time, but that's okay. All right, so to figure out what that force is, okay, we know that any given moment is a force and some uh, perpendicular, perpendicular distance to it there, okay? Um, and so we can just sort of go F is M divided by R, okay? M happens to be nine. We just have to figure out what R is. R is gonna be the length of OA, Okay, now this could be just a little bit tricky. And in fact, um, first time I worked through this, I screwed it up. So I'm gonna try and save you some pain. Um, it's 0.6 meters all the way to the outer gear, but the, uh, the inner gear is 0.15. And so that means that actually our, our length of OA is gonna be 0.6 minus 0.15. Okay, so that's the actual length of OA. That's how we're going to get F. And when you run those numbers, what you get for F is that F is 20. Okay, just like that. Okay, we are going to need the moment of inertia around B. And um, so it gives us a radius of gyration. So we've got the geometry portion of our term. And then we're going to have some offset. Let me call it M. I'll call it R sub B squared. R sub B is that 0.15. It's that small number. Okay. And you can run those numbers for yourself. And I suppose your numbers might, might be different. I don't know. But mine was 0 0.325. 
So that's my moment of inertia there. If I can make that small. I know. Okay. Oops. Okay. So let's get to our, our momentum equation. I need to get rid of that, uh, this little, this little mark, stray mark, the little blue stray mark right there is going to bug me. Let's see if I can get rid of that. Okay. I feel better. All right, so again, we are starting from rest, okay? And so we can toss that term. Um, the left-hand side of our equation turns into an I, um, IB omega final. And that's gonna have to be equal to our, our moment, which in this case is the moment generated by capital F, the 20 Newton force that we found. Okay, so it's that force. So I'll tell you what, I'll do it in symbols, then we'll do it in numbers. Okay, so it's that F times what I called RB. And so the RB is the 0.15. So there's our moment that the gear actually experiences. Okay, and then that's constant. So we got a delta T term on here, just like this. All right, well, when you plug in all your numbers for the force, for R sub B, for delta T, uh, what we get over here is 15. And so we're gonna have omega final is 15 over IB. And we work all that out, we get 46.15 radians per second. Okay, and then we could translate that into actual translational uh, velocity if we needed to, um, but it doesn't ask us to do that here. So, you know, that's all right. Okay, um, all right, key elements here. Uh, remember when we, you do have a complicated system, break it down and think about each component and the component of interest, you just want the forces acting on that particular component, okay? Then just do what we always do. <laughs>